Hi, I'm Steve Clemens. I direct the foreign policy programs at the New America Foundation, and I write the political blog, The Washington Note. I'm here with a good friend, Jim Glassman, who is now uh, executive director of the George W. Bush Institute in Dallas and with offices in Washington and our former undersecretary of state for public diplomacy. Jim, thanks. You've just shared some few thoughts about strategic communications in Iran, and you are critical, I think, of the absence of a more sophisticated public diplomacy 2.0 approach that would move American interests and global interests forward with Iran. Can you give us some feel for what that would look like? Well, uh, let me say first of all that strategic communications won't work for everything, but we have an ideal situation here for strategic communications. If we want to, we, if we want an Iran that is less belligerent, that's less likely to get nuclear weapons, um, the two other alternatives, which are normal diplomacy, let's call it, official diplomacy, that doesn't seem to be working very well. And then the other alternative is war, and I don't think that's a good idea. So strategic communications are, are really, I think, the answer, especially working with a green movement that's already developed. So what we need to do is more moral support and more informational support and more communication support for the green movement. And there are lots and lots of things we can do, but I, I think concentrating on communications, on, the, on building a kind of uh, forum for communications among the Iranians themselves to let the Iranians communicate, uh, let the green movement tell the rest of the, of the country what's, what's going on and what needs to change, that's something we can help to facilitate. And we are really not doing that, certainly not doing it to the extent I'd like to see it. Do you think that you would run the risk of, you know, particularly with greater U.S. government invo uh, involvement and support, um, appropriations and whatnot to, to help fund groups that would do this, do you think you run the risk of inside Iran of robbing from the green movement its domestic legitimacy of seeing you know, what used to be death to America and was recently replaced by death to the dictator mm -hmm. shift back to an, a, a nationalist rejection of American involvement or European involvement or whatever proxies we may try and use. Well, I think, look, I think there's, a, there's something of a risk of that. We are already being accused of that by the regime to not very good effect, I don't think, except that a lot of people are being imprisoned on false charges of collaborating with us. But I do think that if it's clear that what we're doing is facilitating um, the, the, the perfectly legitimate activities of Iranians themselves. This is not, we're not, we're not doing what we did in the 1950s, overthrowing a legitimately uh, uh, positioned uh, a leader of Iran. You know, then I, I, I don't think that that kind of criticism is valid, and I don't think that it's going to stick. I really don't. This is about the Iranians themselves. You know, Jim, before you joined the uh, Bush administration, you were chairman of the Broadcasting Board of Governors, and in that role and responsibility, you oversee a lot of the kind of official work, you know, Radio Free, Free Europe, uh, I, I suppose the TV, Radio Merti crowd, uh, Al Hura. Mm -hmm. um, my sense personally is that the performance of these groups is spotty. Some of it is excellent and some of it's, in my view, substandard and ineffective. How would you rank uh, how these institutions are operating and what do you think could be done to make them better within the line of what you're talking about in terms of a, a, a 2.0 strategy for communications? Well, let, let, me, let me talk about um, what's going on in Iran. Okay. So in Iran, there are three separate streams. One is a Voice of America mm -hmm. television, which broadcasts seven hours a day and has gone up. Is uh, that in, in Farsi? In Farsi. Okay. And has gone from one hour a day two years ago to seven hours today. So it ramped up very, very rapidly. Um, you know, is it uh, super professional? Is, is it, you know, CNN or something? Uh, no. But it's very, very good. And, you know, do they make mistakes? Do, you know, of course. But in general, this is a, a tremendous asset. And it, mm. frankly, I think it's sort of the crown jewel of what we've got in strategic communications for all of its, uh, for all of its uh, uh, you know, uh, it's not perfect, let's put it that way. Second, we have Radio Farda, which is a stream that goes mainly toward young people. So it's music plus news and, and information. And the third is VOA radio, which is pretty much a repetition of the TV. Um, these combined have an audience of 25% of Iranians, and uh, that's a pretty darn large audience. 25% uh, of Iranians tune in weekly. Now, they are moving, to VOA especially, and, and Farda, are moving toward um, 
more sophisticated use of technology. So text messaging, um, sending, uh, they are now enabling, using a, a new app that people will have on their iPhones and Androids in Iran will be able to send photographs and videos um, much more easily to VOA. So VOA, when they vet them, they can put them up. So yeah, I think they're moving in the right direction. You know, do they have enough resources to do it? Um, to do it effectively, probably not. I'm not. I'm not here talking about resources, mm -hmm. though. I do think that resources can be redirected within the current budget. But I really think that's basically that's all we've got at this point, or that's the major part of what we've got, and we need more. But to emphasize, I mean, you you, you actually um, said that you think that the U.S. government per se ought to have a light hand in this in this approach, that it ought to be generated towards generating a conversation yeah. as opposed to being a hierarchical sort right. of distributive, top-down, right. broadcasting mode. Well, let, let, let me be clear. V, that's what VOA tries to do. It can't necessarily do that in everything it does. But, for example, um, I have been on, or I was on when I was an official twice, on a program um, called Roundtable with You mm. on VOA, which is actually broadcast not too many blocks from here in Washington into Iran, and it is a uh, TV uh, call-in show. So it's like it's like you're watching C-SPAN. So, so, you know... You'll be interviewed with the Mandarin service. Yeah, so. so you'll be interviewed, and then somebody's calling in. You know, this is uh, Muhammad from from Tehran, and I have a question for you. Now it's in Farsi; it gets translated if you don't speak Farsi. So that's that's interactive, and it works very well. There's a there's a women's show. Um, certainly, there's news, and you can think of news as not you know conversational, but there's a lot of back and forth with emails. They they make a, a quite an effort to be interactive. Well, Jim, I want to thank you very much for being here. I, sure. I also want to give you credit. I was a, such a big fan of what you were trying to do in your role uh, at the State Department, which was to make public diplomacy less about making the world like us or not, which mm -hmm. seemed to be a bit vapid, uh, and, and to me make it more about generating the kinds of conversations, serious conversations about people and how they see their government and their, their role and, and, and hopefully to choose alternative forms of, you know, wrestling right. other than violence. Right. So I, I really credit you with that. So Good. thanks so much for joining us Thank you, us Steve. Today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks.